Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Cryptids and Critters Paranormal. I'm your host and founder, the Dooster. Today is Monday, March 18th, 2024. Uh, the weather is beautiful outside as far as the way it looks. The sun is shining brightly, but there is a cold wind blowing. And so until it warms up some, I'm going to stay inside, drink another cup of coffee, and do another video drop. Uh, this drop is going to be part nine of my ongoing series, Haunted Robertson County. And it's got, it concerns a little known fort that was built in Robertson County, up north of Adams, during the War for Southern Independence. The Red River, which meanders through Robertson County, has played an important role in the early settlement and development of the area. It provided fish, water, and transportation for early travelers and settlers, and the dense woods that grew along its banks provided firewood, lumber for structures, and natural shelter in the harsh winter months. The Red River begins its 100-mile journey in neighboring Sumner County, and after meandering across Robertson County, it empties into the Cumberland River at Clarksville. The first railroad bridge, or trestle, across the Red River in Robertson County was constructed by the Edgefield and Kentucky Railroad Company. It was located about a mile north of Adams and was completed in the February of 1859 for a total cost of a little over $82,000. Now, In the summer of 1861, at the early onset of the War for Southern Independence, the Confederate Army constructed an earthen fortification in close proximity to the trestle. This fortification was given the name Fort Redmond. And at this time, there were no buildings constructed on the property, and it simply consisted of a series of earthworks that were hand dug by the Confederate soldiers that were stationed there. Now, the main purpose of Fort Redmond was to protect the Edgefield and Kentucky Railroad trestle, which was located just a few yards to the north. The railroad was an important supply route between Nashville and Forts Henry and Donaldson, and was instrumental in transporting soldiers and supplies to the forts. And because of this, the supply route had to be maintained at all costs. In February of 1862, with the fall of Fort Henry and the subsequent fall of Fort Donaldson, the Confederates abandoned the fort and retreated to Nashville. Realizing its strategic location and securing the trestle and the rails across the Red River, federal troops quickly occupied the site and immediately began construction of an impressive blockhouse, complete with twin elevated guard towers or parapets the wood structure, now called Red River Blockhouse No. 1, was constructed of heavy timber, two feet thick, and it was designed to withstand attack by light weapons. After completion, federal troops, including the 15th Infantry of the U.S. Colored Troops, garrisoned the blockhouse for the duration of the war. Records indicate the garrison consisted of approximately 80 Union soldiers. Despite being heavily guarded, on the night of August 16, 1862, the Confederates succeeded in getting the wooden, to setting the wooden trestle on fire, causing heavy damage and effectively putting it out of commission. The following Monday, federal troops pressed seven men along with several wagons and mule teams in the service to help rebuild the trestle. Work went slow, but their efforts were all in vain, for on the following Friday, August 22nd, Confederate Colonel Thomas Woodward attacked the blockhouse and after a short skirmish, captured all the soldiers. He then released them on parole, but not before burning the rest of the bridge. Uh, the old limestone piers that supported the old trestle are still visible, and remnants of earthwork still remain on the southern ridge. 
The old railroad cut is still visible, although nothing today remains of the blockhouse. It's unknown exactly how many soldiers died while stationed there, but there are several instances where several black soldiers drowned while swimming in the Red River. There were also a few suicides among the soldiers. Fort Redmond, as they call it now, is listed on the National Register of Historic Sites and it's not open to the public. It is on property owned by the state and it's under control by the state park division. And anyway, like I said, you know, they were, hope you, uh, hope you enjoyed this. This is a little short video. Uh, you know, very few people know about Fort Redmond. It's kind of secluded. It's hard to get to. It is on private property, so if you go there, you will be trespassing, and the Park Service will probably arrest you and, uh, and haul you off. But anyway, uh, hope you enjoyed this. Uh, this is the Dooster. Uh, I also wrote a few things about the, the war in my book, Vigilante Justice. It kind of chronicles the reconstruction period after the war in Robertson County. And if you would like this or any of my other books, uh, they're available on Amazon. They're available at Moss's Restaurant in Adams, Tennessee. They are available at the uh, Robertson County Archives in Springfield on Willow Street. And they're also available from my home-based bookstore, um, Soggy Bottom Bookstore. If you would like one autographed and signed, uh, shoot me an email to ghosthunter911 at gmail.com. That's ghosthunter911 at gmail.com, and I'll make sure you get a copy delivered to your mailbox. Uh, once again, this is uh, the Dooster. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will catch you on the next video drop. Have a good day, and be careful out there.